Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you liked the first video, please give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. So for today's demo, it's going to be about how to stretch canvas. So some of the materials that you will need will be a cheap paintbrush, sandpaper, this has a grid of 60, some stretching pliers, a staple gun, canvas and stretcher bars, and most importantly, the gesso. So the first thing to do would be, how do I find the correct amount of canvas to use on my piece? Simplest thing would be to use your stretcher bars your, or your frame, lay it down. And then you wanna wrap it around the stretcher bars to see if you have enough. I obviously pre-cut this. So because I obviously pre-cut this, it's gonna be correct, but just pretend I didn't. So rule of thumb, just make sure that you don't have a lot of canvas going over or have too little. You just wanna have just enough. So for these, I have just enough and this will allow me to have um, a grip. Second step would be stapling one staple on each side. So this is in the center though. So this is the first one. And you do the opposite. And then tug it. So you wanna see that line. And you do the same here. Stretch it. Center. And you do the opposite as well. And you also do the same right here. What I want to see is a diamond by stretching it. And if you get that diamond, then you're doing it correct. Oh, crap. <laughs> cool. So the objective here is to make the canvas um, let's see, tight as possible, but not overly too tight to the point that it warps the stretcher bars. If your stretcher bars are already warped, if there's a tight canvas on the actual bars, it's going to be a lot more noticeable. So now, the stretching part. So we're gonna put two staples on each side. So between the one that you already laid on here. So one right here. Try putting them even as possible. Then one right here. And then we're gonna do the same at the opposite side. But for these, stretch it out. Stretch it out, hold it. And then you do the same on these corners. In theory, what we're trying to do, we're trying to, we're trying to spread the tightness evenly. So thinking about it, it's going to start in the center and expand out. So just keep doing that. And this is my last side. And you repeat the same thing. You put one here, one here, the other one here, here, one here, one here, and the other one on the other side. One here, one here. And always pull tight. Just don't get too close on the actual corners because I'm gonna show you closely how to fold them. So the whole point, we wanna get it as possible that it creates a drum sound so to use these um, stretching pliers you would use them like this this would be your your fabric and then you go like that so I would hold it like right there and then I would bring it forward and then this will just help you create tightness if you're not able to reach enough of it and then you just staple it. Forward, hold it, staple. Same here, and then hold it, and then staple. And see this? Oh, actually, this is my last side now. 
So now the test. You want to hear a drum-like sound. Like that. So if you see it, it's all tight and nice. So we're almost finished here. The next step is figuring out whether your piece is going to be landscaped or portraiture. I usually paint my pieces portraiture. Um, it's, this part is very crucial because your corners are going to affect how your piece looks on the edges. As an artist, as a painter, I like my work, the edges be polished. I don't like seeing like, I don't like seeing like folds. Um, whenever I go to museums, galleries, I, whenever I see artists work, I always observe the piece from the front and the sides. What I mean by that, I don't like seeing this. This looks much better. So to like fold your corners, the first step is to fold this in half, hot dog style. Grab this side, here's the corner. Bring it inward, let it fold, hold it, and then fold the rest of it like that. And then you staple one here, here, and here. So now for this side, we're gonna fold it half again, fold it over, like that, hold it, and then fold the rest of it, like that. And then you staple it right here, one right here, one right there. All corners are folded, and they look nice. If you notice that the canvas is a little bit loose and not tight enough, you could mist it with um, water. Let it dry before you add gesso and what would help happen is that the cotton will dry and then scrunch up together and tie. Okay, so we are almost finished with this whole entire process but the last step is to prime the canvas. In the process of priming your canvas, um, the gesso, you don't want it to be in certain areas of your canvas to be thicker than the other. You want to have the same consistency because this will facilitate also the sanding of the gesso in between the layers. So the gesso that I'll be using is by Utrecht. It's by Blick. Um, I like the consistency. It's thick. It um, covers pretty well. But if it's too thick, you could just add a little bit of water to it. Or you could start off with your drawing and then you could use um, liquid text. There you go. Clear gesso. If I want to save time, just say if I'm working on a large drawing or a large project in general, I would just do my drawing first and then use this clear gesso. And then uh, above that, I'll do my underpainting. Other than that, let's get started. So I'm gonna just put a little bit. See how thick it is? It's full coverage. I start from the center and work my way out. Um, it just makes it less messier. I want to spread an even coat throughout the entire canvas. If you want to make this process a lot faster, you could use a bigger brush. Um, but because I'm using this size of canvas, I'm fine. If you're working on large pieces, is by using a paint roller, like the ones that you'll buy at your local hardware store. Those work great, especially for um, a full coverage, and it's also even. So I'm about finished here with the first coat. We're gonna do three coats. To speed up the process, I'll be using a hair dryer. And let's do this on warm setting. Cool, so this is completely dry. Um, I took the liberty of Pretty much coating it two times and in between each coat I'll let it dry and then I'll sand it. This is the last coat. Now the final step is just sanding it. I won't be sanding it rough but just soft.
and that's pretty much it cool and if you like that video please hit the subscribe button give it a thumbs up and if you want you could leave a comment below and I'll try to respond as soon as possible